Word advice or wisdom? Oh, that already I'm worried. Um, can you offer me to take back to the sun? Oh, no, this is for you. <laughs> this absolutely is not my question. Oh, to take back to the Sangat Shambhala Mountain Center as we work with information that the head of our lineage has been accused of sexual assaults. You know, just now, again, um, Lama Sotrim and I were discussing this. It's a big problem. It's not just Shambhala. It's not just um, Rikpa in, in, in the West. It, it's a, a deep-rooted problem. Not just one person. It's the system. Where, as they say, as we all say, Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so unless the, the teacher truly is at the level of absolute wisdom and compassion, they should not be given absolute power. The problem is not only their own actions, but that there then appears this whole cycle of um, concealment, and um, secrecy and total non-compassion for those who have been victimized by this behavior of the teachers. That the Sangha themselves reject them. And instead of coming forward to help and heal, they um, create more of a, a chasm and a pain and so now, like with this country, if I might say so, it's a little bit with, with your political situation. All that was festering underneath and denied is now coming to the surface. So you can see it. it may be disgusting, but when you lance a boil, all this poison comes out and then you see it. That is the beginning of healing. So also with all these, you know, scandals, in the various Dharma circles, not all Dharma circles, I mean, majority of the Lamas and other teachers, perfectly, perfectly pure. It's not that everybody is the same. But there is definitely a problem. And as now it is coming more to the surface, it may be very painful. But I feel that very pain, if we embrace it with compassion and wisdom and understanding and acceptance, it can heal. We are not condoning what they did was awful. Unbelievable. I can't believe these guys, where they're getting from, honestly, I tell you. I mean, even in ordinary, normal society, you don't go around acting like that. What do they think? I mean, I, there's a whole big thing behind it all. I mean, it's very feudal thinking mind. But what we can do is to hold with compassion and understanding on all sides the problem and allow it to be come out into the fresh air and set some boundaries and rethink the whole situation of the uh, commitment between the student and the teacher. And when our deeper intuition says, and this doesn't feel right to trust our intuition. <clears throat> Can I see the question again? <laughs> the question is really about <clears throat> what can you offer me to take back? <coughs> so, One of the problems is that in Vajrayana, <clears throat> and particularly in the Shambhala community at the uh, tantric level, um, one is told that one must see the Lama as the Buddha, and that anything the Lama does is perfect, and that whatever that might, they might seem is wrong with it, that that is your impure vision. And your, that that's your work, your training. 
And so that this is really hammered into you for um, extensively. And I know in the Shambhala community, people have to take a vow to not have any other teachers once they're at that level of uh, bhajana practice, which is nundro. And so they've made that promise. The many, many people have made that promise. And then this, is, this boil breaks, which I think is a great image. And so your worldview, it's not just a matter of this isn't OK and we have to fix it, but your entire worldview is shattered. And that is uh, extremely upsetting. And um, I, I imagine the, the whole community is is in, in trauma. Um, I, just for anyone who doesn't know, this, this just came out, was it yesterday? Yesterday, the day before yesterday, maybe. It's, a, it's something called Project Sun, Sunshine. And uh, it's uh, begun by a, a woman in Nova Scotia who um, was sexually abused within that community and wrote a first report on that and had um, sort of opening that whole thing up in, in terms of the whole community. And then yesterday, or whenever it was, two days ago, um, the second report, which went into the Sakyong and his um, behavior. And he's the head of that community. And, and, and it was pretty um, intense. What the, the um, reports were anonymous, but... Um, uh, yeah, the, there are people behind them. And um, so anyway, just so you all know what we're talking about. Um, but as um, Jetsuma said, it's not just this community. It's, um, in, it's, it's all over Zen. It's all over the Catholic Church. It's in um, many communities and also in the rest of society. We, we know this with Me Too and and... Every, everything that's kind of come out, which I'm actually really excited about because it's going to create change, finally. That there's enough of us, enough women who have each other's backs to come out of silence and say what happened and what it's been like for them. And so it's an opportunity for everyone, for, for our whole society, to bring out this shadow and look at it and transform it. And so I think my answer would be to this specific question, what can I bring back, is, is first of all to um, hold the heart of bodhicitta, even in the face of this, to never let that go. And I'm reminded of this story of uh, the Dalai Lama was meeting with somebody who just come out of Tibet, a monk, been in prison, been tortured extensively uh, by the Chinese who had invaded Tibet. And the Dalai Lama said to him, were you ever really in danger? And he said, there were a few times I was really in danger. And then the Dalai Lama said, How, uh, you know, what happened? And he said, I was in danger of losing my bodhicitta when I was being tortured. And that's what he considered the greatest danger, that he would lose his bodhicitta under those circumstances. And so to guard your bodhicitta, even in the face of this level of pain and atrocity and your world changing and falling apart in some ways, so that's one thing. The other thing is uh, what, what she talks about in the report, which I thought was really interesting, is she looked at several communities and Zen communities where this had happened. And the ones that recovered and went on, the teacher actually confessed, went into treatment, did whatever to heal it, and then came back 
under new rules. <laughs> and then the community went on. Or the teacher just left and the community went on, but the teacher admitted the fault. Where, it, where the community falls apart is when the teacher doesn't do that. And there's, so there's no, it's like the truth and reconciliation in, in, uh, in South Africa that Peter's been part of. Um, if there isn't that admission of the damage that's been done, it's very hard to heal. And so many of these communities have fallen apart. Whole lineages have been lost. So this is really up to him in many ways, what he's going, how, what he's going to do. And I hope he has good advice around him um, and that he's brave and um, goes into treatment and, you know, um, actually works with himself and doesn't just say that he's going to, you know, that he steps down from his position and until a third party investigation is done and then um, meantime go into treatment and then see if there can be a truth and reconciliation process that can happen for the community. That would be my advice, um, but it, you can't control him, what he's going to do. And so within that situation, if he doesn't do that, then you have to decide how you feel about being in that community, if that's how it is and how it's going to be. And remember that the Dharma is yours. That it's not his. The Dharma is yours. And if you really love it and it's gone into you, no one can harm that. No one can take it away from you. Nothing that happens can ever make it stain it. It's, it's, it's always pure within you. And, and that is really bodhicitta, the essence of that dharma. So that you'll, you, you'll be okay. You'll find another sangha. You'll find other friends and go on. 